Good morning and welcome to Gulfstream today. Brian and Samantha with you on another beautiful day, a beautiful Mother's Day. So happy uh, Mother's Day to everybody out there. And you can see the three courses we have here, a fast main track, a firm turf course, the Tapita as well on a nine race card. And uh, the day after, a lot of excitement yesterday with the two Royal Ascot qualifiers and, of course, the Rainbow Six paying out too. Yeah, it was uh, good for all. And Neo Jim. He Neil sealed Jim the got deal. it done. Yeah. yeah. Finally got the job yeah. done. And uh, George Weaver sweeps the two stakes yeah. yesterday, beat two odds on, I believe, Wesley Ward horses. Close, yeah. Yeah, not easy to be done. No. And so um, two horses that could be very live at Royal Ascot. We'll show you the, the replays in uh, the lightning round. But, yeah, it was a, a lot of excitement to be able to do that and put that on on such a historic uh, card that they put on uh, over there in Royal Ascot. Yeah, part of it. yeah, it is. And there are multiple options for uh, the point. races, too. So if they if he thinks that one of these horses is going to stretch out, he's got that option there. Yeah, there's uh, that's the you know later on in June and mm -hmm. the, the television coverage is, is so good now. And, uh, you know, hopefully those horses uh, progress on and are over there and make a big dent. And, yeah, uh, it was great to see him here. Great. Wesley Ward was here. I know the day didn't go as well, but uh, there was a lot of excitement here. yesterday. Yeah, it was. It was fun to have everybody buzzing in the paddock and hopefully next year we'll get to do the same edition of yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. If uh, the Rainbow Six paid almost $3,000 yep. to Neo Gem, so if you had <laughs> it, uh, congratulations. We did not. We were close, but... Uh, uh, yeah, five no. out of six doesn't pay. Five out of six does not pay, but on the nine race card, we will start anew mm -hmm. in race four with the Rainbow Six, and uh, I've got a ticket coming up, but the early car, uh, early part of the card kicks off the early pick five. We'll take a look at my ticket. Very few scratches today. Not a lot going on in terms of a rework, so everything stayed pat here in the early pick five uh, too deep in the opener in race number two i go to number six trotting gear in race number three the six again d coldest there is the best bet of the day I'm, I'm believing in vladislav now after two really really good races in a row and here's a spread in race number five number seven on top enzo's world and we've got a replay of that an impetuous soul last time it's a 36 dollars play we'll be on a firm turf course in this maiden special weight to open the nine race card sprinting five furlongs just the three-year-olds here we scratch the one chrome ghost and uh, pretty solid field and kind of a, a tricky little race. I thought you could go several different ways. And with that being said, we both land on the exact uh, good, good post for Chaplin. Yeah, I think so too. And if you go back to his last turf race, I was excited to see him on the grass. Mm -hmm. I just feel like he's got that just kind of a movement to him, that grass action. And he really got bumped around quite a bit and was still able to put together a nice second place finish. Yeah, we've got a stat for George Weaver as mm -hmm. well. And again, he won the two juvenile stakes yeah. yesterday. Congratulations to him and his team and he was here 11 percent third start on the turf the past five years so not you know not a huge stat but it's a barn that does a lot of different things well and you know this is in that realm of possibility and yeah. i just think get it, it's clear that that chaplain got to the turf last time and, and woke up exactly and that's a 43 percent in the money so if yeah. you're not getting the win you're using them underneath exact as tries that's, yep. that's going to be a, a solid uh, lock for you hopefully. i would probably have picked jaeger if he was outside of chaplain he's like he's kind of the same exact horse yep. he got to the turf last time yep he did and he just, I think he needed the race. Mm -hmm. That was kind of his thing. He, he switched, he just was on his left lead down the lane. That's kind of a tired horse type of uh, action there. So he looks like he might kind of be sent along a bit, don't you think? Yeah, he's got speed. And that's why I said, you know, that maybe you, you yourself as a chaplain is outside. That's a good spot to be in yep. as opposed to Jaegers to the inside. He's got to run hard every step of the way. I, I like last shift, but he's got to get his act together at the start. That's, yeah, I'm not a fan of hard spuns on the grass. Okay. Yeah, just they're 9%. He's 9% first time turf. Mm -hmm. I don't. This is such an interesting horse, too, because he was so bet down yeah. last time, and I was a bit confused at that. Yeah, and, uh, boy, this is going to be a quick trip for him, five furlongs yep. on the turf. I think he's got talent. I don't know if we'll see it today. Early pick four time in race number two. We're going a flat mile on the fast main track here. These are 12-5 maiden claimers, three and up, Phillies and Maris. We'll take a look at Samantha's ticket. Yep, early pick four duties for me. I'm just going to rip off the Band-Aid early with quick style in the opener mm -hmm. of this uh, pick four. Four, race three, the four is my top pick. That's Quincy Cafe. We got a replay coming of that. In race number four, the seven is my top pick. That is Indy Lion. But I do have your Vladislav in there as well. And in race number five, just too deep for me. I felt like I could have even done more than this, but uh, Enzo's World and Impetuous Soul are coming out of the same race, yep. and Impetuous Soul had a trip last time. We're going to show that replay. Nine dollars. Uh, punch it a few times. Well, you are a braver young lady than I am because uh, <laughs> you're going to single quick style. 
Yes, I know. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I just, I'm not a huge fan of trotting gear, and I figured that's probably the only other sure. horse in the race. I just, I'm not completely sold on her. Uh, I think that quick style from the rail, he doesn't have a, she doesn't have a ton of early speed, right. and maybe she can just kind of set a nice little stalking trip. But this field, there's no world beaters. No, and that's the that's the tricky part about mm -hmm. this field. Uh, trotting gear got blitzed by Black Ice last time, and maybe that in and of itself is <laughs> well. They both did a problematic. And that's, yeah, yeah, they both exactly. did. Excuse me. Um, I, the one funky kind of horse I thought was subtle, subtle Senorita. Yes. Adding Lasix, getting yep. back to the dirt. I agree. I think so, too, because that wasn't a bad race two starts back. Yeah. That was just her second start. And she might have a little speed. It's going to be a tight. I, I would think it's going to be a compact group. I yeah. picked trotting gear because of her speed. And, you know, we've talked about this a lot, Samantha. Now, you don't want to get too far behind. Because nope. they don't come back. They don't yeah. come back when they stretch them out at this one-turn mile on the on the main track here. Good race in the third here. It's mm -hmm. a starter optional claimer for three-year-olds or going six furlongs on the main track. We'll bring up a replay and I'll let you talk about it with Cajun Hope and Quincy Cafe. I, I, can you trust Quincy Cafe off this huge effort last time? Uh, I think so. Okay. I mean, it was a little, almost a month ago now. Uh, he was uh, knocking heads. That uh, that uh, Great Navigator is a very nice yeah. horse, runs today at Monmouth as well. A Swervin was just incredible yeah i thought quincy cafe ran a really good race he did and um yeah he wasn't bet at all that day but lano reyes stays here mm -hmm. and uh four wins on the card yesterday for him Big yeah day. i just think that yeah there wasn't a lot going on in that replay but cajun hope is another horse in here i think will get played you have him lower down i do as well but i think they're gonna play him just because michael yates has been doing really right. well but he's just never really developed i feel like he's just kind of in no. the ballpark of the 60 buyers 13s on the thoroughgraph sheet and i like it at two if they don't progress at three yeah. it, and they come out and run the same number to me it's just kind of that's that's what we're gonna get that's what you are yeah, yeah. The, the question if you're not familiar with swerving he, he's a horse i think that's going places yes, for Safi. Yes, definitely. Uh, a lot of talent. It was his first start in a while. Yeah. But if, if Quincy Cafe runs back to that race, he, he's going to beat this field. I just, it seems like, I don't know if it's more the exception or the norm, and we're going to find out today. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was his first start off the claim, mm -hmm. and they, they certainly got improvement out of it. I just went a little bit a uh, different way. Rohan would decold this to the outside. We get a little weight with Angel yeah. Morales, and I thought it was an okay, you know, that was a really good race for the level last time. And I think the cutback might help him a little bit too. Yeah, it could. And he, he, the thing with him is he can't let him get too far no. away. He's kind of lost a bit of speed yeah. as of late. I don't know what that is a product of because we haven't seen him kind of being a, on his toes, I guess, yeah. or just being a bit snappy in, since February. And I was on the tapita. So he's got to get in it a little bit more yeah and i i thought just maybe now he cuts them back and yeah. i didn't think there was as much th they were going 44 and change last time mm -hmm. i'm hoping um you know he can keep them a little bit closer today because samantha's right you're not going to loop the field uh without your speed so yeah. we'll see we'll see what we get and he could be an, he should offer a little bit of value as well because yeah. i i think they're going to see that big figure on quincy cafe and probably come back to him and you said cajun hope uh, as well is going to get bet too yeah. so we'll see three down six to go when we come back like we said we'll start that rainbow six anew in race number four stay tuned stream today brian and samantha with you on another beautiful day here and mother's day happy mother's day you're kind of sort of where your cat mother yeah cat mom oh. horse mom happy mother's day to my mom 
And my grandma. Yeah. Love yeah. you guys. My mom as well. She's yeah. definitely not watching. I can tell you they're on a drive somewhere. But uh, Okay. Well, they your can mom always. watches. Yeah, she does. She does. I don't think she is now, but if she is, love okay. you. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, Rainbow six time in the fourth. Yeah. We're going to start fresh here today, and it will not take long to build up. We'll take a look at my ticket. 43-20 ticket. There's your playbook. I'm best bet of the day is Ladislav. Nice. So we'll single. Okay, right off the bat. Uh, we already went through the, the, the fifth here with Enzo's World, but that replay coming up in race number six. I've got Dove in charge uh, in race number seven my long shot today is candy tycoon uh, in race number eight a two by three double to get out of this sequence the so one significant scratch to me on the card was create again so he's going to come out i didn't have him on top but i did have him on my ticket uh tone feeling always was on top scratched out yesterday to run here and then point liam in the finale uh it's testing winners for terry pompey but i liked that race last time so there you go 43-20. It kicks off with a good race. I'll let you lead it because we've got the replay of Vladislav and Indy Lion, who's on the outside today. Yeah, these two uh, were ran pretty good efforts yeah. here. Now, Vladislav uh, just had to travel a little bit further, I would say, and uh, he was not bet. Look at that, 35-1. to 1. Indy Lion really looked like he was just going to go right by Ali Oop Johnny and just alley -oop Johnny kept finding more and more. And look at Vladislav, though. He just really... But the thing I want to note about that is the three came out just a little bit, yeah. alley -oop Johnny. And I'm not saying that uh, Indy Lion was going to win by any means, but I think it made the difference of second and third. And I just yeah. think Indy Lion's a better horse than Vladislav. And Vladislav wasn't going by there. But now he... he too, this is why I like him, and he's my best bet of the day. He's put together now. Whereas two back, you, you saw it there, 35 to 1. That's and true. Nobody believed it. Well, what did he do last time? He doubled up, and he ran very, very well at 13 to 1. Now, you got the wedding and the funeral angle, and maybe <laughs> I'm going to the funeral today Could because be. he's going to get bet in here, and I think he's... Is he 7 to 2 uh, yeah. on the morning line? And that does seem about right. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I'm just a believer now in, in those last two races. Antonio's going so good of late. Yeah. Won another race yesterday. So um, I, I, I'm okay with him today. And, and I, I had a little more question uh, with Indy Lion. I, that's fair. At least I think that Indy Lion is drawn well yeah, for this. Um, but Vladislav is right next to him. So I yeah. guess we'll have to see. And you're right. 35 to 1, that's not a horse I want to bet back no. there. And they didn't bet him back. But he's now, like you said, kind of proven himself yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. So, I, I came back to cashier check. He was so rank on the inside last cool. time. I didn't like that at all. I thought no. he was in a good spot. I don't know if that means he's going the wrong way or what. Yeah. I, sometimes horses, when you start to pick a fight with them early, mm -hmm. you're just kind of done for. And yeah. you look at his page, and he's been very consistent lately. So besides that race. Right. So now he's got Lano Reyes, who is very quiet with his hands, and maybe he can just drop him and let him do his thing. He he scares me a bit. Yeah, and he's off the inside. I think yep. that's beneficial. Now, if you want to play devil's advocate, though, Victor Barboza is going to run Cortano off the claim, yep. and he, you know, he trains cashier check, too, so now he's going to run, too. This is an interesting horse on a barn that typically moves him up. Yes, and yeah, it was a $16,000 effort last time. Yes, there's been a month kind of a freshening mm -hmm. up here, but we've kind of seen Victor do this move yeah. quite a bit lately. Once he claims a horse, he'll wait on him a little bit, yeah. kind of get their feet under them, and that was a huge effort last out. He just, when it says dug in on the running line, that is so true. He just pinned his ears back, and that's two wins in a row. I, I'm not going to discount a horse that's strung together two wins. No, and now and we talk about this all the time. Off the claim, yep. not in for a tag yep. is you know, it's, huge. It, it's right there in front of you. So I think yep. he's a definite player in here. Late pick five time in race number five. This is the lone Tapita race of the day, as Samantha uh, mentioned to me in the break. So a mile and 16th and a $16,000 maiden claim. We'll take a look at her ticket. Yep. Late pick five for me here. $36. Going to get to this race in just a second. Race six. The six will be extremely hard to beat. Yes, I know that. But uh, dudes for <laughs> Starling, it's my long shot for a reason, but maybe we can turn the tables. Uh, race number seven, this is uh, my best bet of the day. This is Saratoga Flash. I really do like this horse here today. Savvy Joseph, he's got two in that stake race. And in race number eight, the six is my top pick. That is Loud Mouth. And in race number nine, I'm spreading a bit. I felt like this race could go a lot of different directions, but seven is who I landed with on top. That's Richie. I think this horse has just been 
really, really good as of late. Richie coming in. Um, yeah, he has been. And I think getting back to the turf might uh, really, really yep. perk him up a little bit. He was so good off the layoff. Uh, yeah two starts back. So here we go in the fifth. Like we said, the lone torpedo race routing here. Uh, impetuous Soul in Enzo's world. It didn't work out very good early for Impetuous Soul. No, it didn't. So we're going to pick up this replay. Now, these in this first part of the replay, let's only pay attention to Impetuous Soul. So this was going into the first turn. Thank you so much, Bob. And he's rolling along pretty good. He's a bit, he's not ranked by any means, but boom, you just see him clip heels with that eight horse and just completely knocked him off his momentum. Momentum. Look at him now, though. So Enzo's world on the rail, kind of not the place you want to be on the tapita as of late. And Enzo's world, uh, pardon me, impetuous soul on the outside here, even despite being clipped heels, having clipped heels, losing a lot of lengths, he still just kind of fires hard. And I think he would have been second over Enzo's world. If that wouldn't have happened, it would have put him in a better situation. Yeah. That's just, it's hard to do once you kind of clip like that. And he made up a lot of ground. A lot of horses would just give it up. Yeah, I, 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 it's, it was right there. And, you know, Enzo's world comes through on the inside. Maybe you don't want to be down there. I get it. But other than that, he had a dream trip. Yes. You know, I came back to him. I'm using all four of these horses. I, I just, I, the running style of Impetuous Soul. Because no doubt the clipping heels hurt his chances. Mm-hmm. But he was going to be there anyway. That's true. And that's That was my worry. Yeah, that's a fair point there. He's kind of a horse that, as of late, he just kind of lollygags the first half of the race. Yeah, he's got to be in it a little bit more. But to counter that, he's going to mile at 16th today. Yep, no doubt. So a little more running room. A little bit. A little but bit. But it, ma it makes a difference. Well, it does. He's yeah. just hot right there. Yeah. Um, notary, so Jack. I don't know. This is an interesting one, right? Oh, man. We haven't seen him since uh, December of 2021. Yeah. Made in special weight. Yep. Now he's with Safi. Going to add Lasix. Yeah, this horse could just, like, wire the field. I mean, what is he going to do? We don't know. We don't know. We and I no would idea. say this. Uh, this is a late pick five. So the good part about this and in your rainbow, check your double will pays. Mm -hmm. Check the tote board before you play your late pick five. Yep. You don't want to see this horse up there seven, eight to one. No, you don't. And the good thing about him is he's uh, fired some pretty nice works yeah. as of late at Palmetto. So yeah. that's a good thing. Still, yeah, we, we just we don't know what no. we're going to get with him. So he's seven to two on the line. We're going to scratch the two propellant. He's got to be every bit of that or lower. Otherwise, I'd be very, very leery yeah, exactly. of what you're going to get from him today. Late pick four time in race number six. We'll take a look at my ticket in that spot. We're sprinting six and a half on the main track here. Optional claimer for the state breads. These are uh, fillies and mares and three deep here. And it, it just basically just mirrors my rainbow. Uh, my long shot is, is in uh, the, the Mr. Steel. That's our stakes today. Good to have a stakes mm -hmm. on a Sunday on a firm turf course as well. 78, uh, 87, excuse me, in race number eight. Tone feeling again came out yesterday to run here. Certainly Mr. McHugh is uh, going to be a big player in there for Ronaldo Richards. And then three deep in the finale point Liam right back with him $27 a uh, little tricky here mm -hmm. I, I, I felt I, I you know I didn't have a lot of confidence with Dub in charge um, but it's Rohan he's I know he's facing winners um, I, I kind of thought this might be a, a group that he could make a, a little bit of a dent with yep. he comes in off a, a power effort so let's yeah. go with him right back but um, you're you're on the one I am it's my long shot. Okay, the one, the, the one's got the slash. Oh, that's not a Can't good sign. Can't win. Yeah, Whoa. well, <laughs> go. I want to hear it. You have to start somewhere here, and yes, okay. This horse is like twenty points below Sophia's Storm here, um, twenty-four to be exact. And but here's the thing with this filly: she's really lightly raced. Mm -hmm. I think Sophia's Storm. She's put in so many good races now together. She was going into a three-race win streak. Um, up until last out, and then she was just narrowly defeated by the yeah. missus, who's a good horse for Michael Yates. Mm -hmm. But I think the buck has to stop yeah. somewhere with her. She's not going to run any better. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I thought that maybe Dudes for Starling can s step up a little bit, has some speed. I I like the fact that Marco Meneses is He's been with her all four starts, point. and so he knows her. Uh, yeah, she just beat Maiden Claimer 16,000, but at least now she's in with state breads. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a tough ask, but yeah, we'll see. 
Well, I agree wholeheartedly with what Samantha said on Sophia Storm. I mean, yeah. just, she's going to run that race. She's going to run a 72 mm -hmm. by her, you know, whatever uh, it is. Maybe she comes back because, as she said, three. Or lower. Th or yeah. lower, yep. yeah, because this is three big efforts in a row now mm -hmm. uh, from her. And you just wonder, can we keep going up or can yeah. we keep asking and asking? She is well drawn. But, you know, I I'm taking a shot, too. So it's the right time to, to maybe look for some value. Uh, other than that, we don't uh, really match. So no. Rain has been popular. Rain's going to run now. Again, not in for a tag today. No, and uh, coming out of that Sophia's Storm race, so maybe this is a horse that can step up a bit. She's six years old. We're yep. kind of seeing what she is, but at least she's been so popular in the claim box. I think that's a testament to her abilities because, she, again, she's six. Yeah, and now Colin Mirage doesn't want to risk her for a tag, yep. so I think that's uh, a positive as well. Here's your stakes. In the seventh, it's the uh, Mr. Steel, the, re the returning uh, champion. Me and Mr. C is in here as well. We are going to scratch the four. Hot-blooded, it's best bet versus long shot time. But I'll let you talk because we've got the replay of Saratoga Flash and Max KL coming out. Yep, we do here. And uh, Saratoga Flash has just been so impressive lately. Now, Max KO is buried in the pack here, kind of looking like nowhere to go. Saratoga Flash just really kicked on nicely. I I think that this is a horse that if he can just get that little bit extra, it will help him so much. And I want to note, this horse did not switch leads at all. And that made the difference of the win. I mean, because it was minuscule. Yeah, it was. Um, I, I thought he had to win. We hadn't, okay. we hadn't seen get smoking in a long, long time. He's yeah. a great at stakes horse. He went up to Keeneland and ran exactly. and one. Exactly, so. yeah. And your guy lost by this much, so it's you know, can't beat him up that no, much. No, no, you can't. Um, it was a good effort. That there, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you, you saw it right there. He mm -hmm. seems to be going forward. Yeah. Too. I mean, Max Ko would have been a lot closer. I don't know if he's, he's probably not going to win the race, but he would have been yeah. a lot closer. I, I'm I'm stabbing, a, admittedly, with with Candy Tycoon. But you look at his turf races, and don't forget. Those turf races were in the thick of the championship exactly. meet. Exactly, yes. They were against some really, really good horses, mm -hmm. and he's not that far off these horses anyway. No, no, he's really not. If you go to that race two back, third place finisher came back to win up to the mark. Oof. Won, won a grade one on Derby Day. Exactly. That's a nice horse for Todd Pletcher. Yeah. And this horse just saw the heels of him. I mean, and it's not like... He's, he doesn't get up to the mark here. No, exactly. And he wasn't that far behind him no. to begin with. And he, I, I actually kind of like that he held his form a little bit on yeah. the main track last time. Uh, so he's a stab, but he's a price. And it's, you know, all these horses, regardless, we can talk about the defending champion now, me and Mr. C. Yeah. Listen, he's fine, and he might win again. But my point is, and your point, they're all right here next to each other. Exactly, yeah. And if you're going to bank on maybe Mr. C can't, I don't want to say get back to his form before because he's always kind of stayed in that 80 and 90 buyer range. Uh, I, he's got a nice little leg up for this going then a mile and an eighth, and now he's in for the mile and a 16th here, which I think is just kind of his suited sure. distance. Uh, he might just be too good for these. But, again, like you said, I think everybody's just pretty – not a lot of separates them. No, and he's nine to five on the line. I don't really disagree with that. They're going to no. bet him, but if you want to talk like a fair odds kind of thing, he's like five to two, three to one in here. Yes, I, yes. I don't think he's got much of an edge on no. these horses. And those two races, recent races, you know, they were good fields. They were state bred, so he's. They were. And the race uh, on January 21st where hot blooded, he ran third to hot blooded, who ran second. Mm -hmm. I, hot blooded to me is just a horse that his kind of best form is behind him. I agree. Now he just ran at Keeneland. And so I just think to myself, I wouldn't choose hot blooded in here. Right. So why would I pick me and Mr. C? At a short number yeah. two. No, we agree on that for sure. Race number eight, we're going to scratch. This is the biggest scratch, I think, on the card. Yeah. Create again is coming out. Peter Wall, they're knocking on the door mm -hmm. of a thousand career wins. 997, I believe. So we scratched the one. We scratched the three. Adventure Seeker, you are on loudmouth here. Big race last time at Tampa. Yeah, huge race. Mm -hmm. And I like the way... Uh, that winner of that race came back to win again. Mm -hmm. Now he's here. This is Sandino Hernandez's base here at Palm Meadows. This is his home track. And like we said yesterday, he's just quietly been sneaky good as of late. And Ismael Jaramillo's aboard. That means send him. I would think, and I like uh, horses that cut back uh, going two turns yes. through seven furlongs. Yeah. They, they bring a lot of foundation here. Yeah. Um, and he's... Oh, five he's to five to two. Uh, yeah. They're going to bet the seven, and Tone Feeling's eight to one. I mean, that's impossible. Um, 
I mean, he scratched out yesterday to yeah. run here. You just draw a line through his last race. He's That's not, true. And he's as good as anybody in here. Probably better. Yeah. 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 And that's the thing. Do you just, it, you got to be forgiving, I guess, of a race like that last time. Just yeah. kind of threw a clunker. It was the Hercules Hey Porter race. So, yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I want to excuse that. And now he's cu he's cutting back to that seven furlongs, which he's won at two races going this. Yeah, and he's perfectly drawn. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, He's still, Joe claims him for eight. Joe Orsino, two back. And he's now he's running for 12-5. So it's not like he's at the bottom no. or anything. Um, now, again, it's kind of silly to talk about odds because the one and the three are out of this exactly. race. Exactly, it's going to blow the line. Yeah, they're yeah. going to bet this horse. The seven is interesting now. We haven't seen him in a bit, but Ronaldo Richards off the claim. Yeah, I, I'm surprised you got that name right off the bat. I was looking at it yesterday. I couldn't figure it out. Well, I, I, I said the name. I don't, did I get it right? Uh, Mr. Mr. McHugh. Okay. I that, think so. I wouldn't have gotten that. I was phonetically trying to do it. But coming off a nice win, but that was October. Where have you been? Oh, well, that's a very good point, but I, I, mm -hmm. gall I gallantly nailed that one. No. <laughs> Last one on the turf in the finale. We're uh, on the firm turf course, and this is a good race to get out on the card, and it's a tricky race to end all the horizontal sequences as well. An optional claimer here for the three-year-olds and up. You go to number seven, old Richie coming back. Richie. Boy, his race two back was so good. It was really good, and then you look at that race last time, yeah, he ran second to last, but look who beat him. Hope and him, who for Barry Croft is an absolute freak yeah. on the Tapita. Was a nice win last uh, two races back on the grass. Didn't get bet, but I think this is a horse. What I like about him, Brian, is, is he showed kind of uh, a, some tactability about mm -hmm. him. Like he, he doesn't have to go to the lead. He did two races back, sure. uh, but he's also shown he can come from off of it. So I like as these horses are getting older, they can kind of win in different ways. And he's won four races out of 19. That's pretty good. Uh, and he's perfectly drawn. Oh, Because as you said, he yeah. doesn't have to go, nope. but he's not letting anybody get away. This yep. is a perfect post for him. I I'm stabbing with, with Point Liam. He could be my long shot because he's, he's 10 to 1 and yeah. he should be 10 to 1. But it's right there in front of you. He got the turf last time and he blew way up. He did. You had him that day, mm -hmm. did you? I think. Uh, Point Liam, I, I don't. I can't remember if you did or not. not For sure some reason, I, I thought maybe you Terry did. Terry Pompey's been good to me. I don't know if I had Point Liam. Though. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but and it was facing older for the first time yeah. as well, uh, coming off of a little bit of a freshening up. I, I always say that horses, if they like a, a different surface, they tend to right. explode, and this is one that's a, a perfect example of that. Let's see how Jaeger runs. I I couldn't have Point Liam because I would have remembered. We that's, always remember. That's true, yeah. Uh, let's see how... Except at Churchill to make your best bet. Oh, that's true. I mm -hmm. forgot about that. But uh, he's interesting, and you you hit it, hint, hinted at it. He didn't do any running of late, mm -hmm. and then he gets to the turf, and he really moves forward. So I, I think that's significant. Yeah. I like those kind of angles. Boy, unsociable could win. I'm not saying he can't. You've got him in second. I've got him in my mix. Off the claim for Jose. Speed to his inside, speed to his outside. Boy, he's going to have to run hard. Yes. Very, very hard. And that race, two starts back. It was kind of all of them finished at once yeah. that day. Uh, hoping him was just kind of had a horse come up the rail on him that day. Uh, it, you know, it's – I like the fact that they keep claiming this horse, mm -hmm. and they're not – just throwing chump change at nope. him. If you look at it, 50,000, 25,000, 25,000. So this is a this is a horse, a hot commodity. Yeah, it, it, it's a good point. I just feel like if you kind of close your eyes and visualize this race, he he's basically got to be inside speed with mm -hmm. Richie pressing him the whole yep. way. Yep. And that seems like a, a big ask yeah. to me, as much as a major player as he is. And, and Jose's been going so great good. guns of, of late, mm -hmm. too. So nine of them here for you. It's a good card to end the weekend uh, as well. The rainbow starts anew. But before we leave you, we're going to go back. We'll take a look at the lightning round. <laughs> At the two two-year-old races yesterday that send the winners uh, automatic qualifiers, expenses, and all that good stuff over to Royal Ascot. And it was uh, a lot of people maybe thought it was going to be a Wesley Ward day, but it was George Weaver's party. It was, yeah. And some people knew. I think in the horse in the last year was No Nay Mets winning the boys' division. This horse hit the front and 
never turn back. No, this was impressive, and it was professional. And you look at them here, straight as an arrow through the stretch here. And uh, the Mets, Yankees, exact. Uh, Dennis and I didn't have it, so that was unfortunate. And Alex Bregman, the Astros All-Star, owns this horse. So that was super uh, cool as well. And how about Crimson Advocate? Listen, I picked him. I certainly didn't think he was going to wire the field. No.